Hey gearheads and welcome to the 2022 Chicago Auto Show and behind me this beautiful blue RST version of the brand new Silverado EV. This is first chance I'm getting to see it and I've got the lead engineer Nicole with us to pick her brain and ask just a few questions. Nicole nice to have you. Thanks for having me here. I am very excited. This is a long time coming for me. I've really wanted to see this in person and pick your brain a little bit about this truck. Absolutely. First things first, it's an all new truck, right? It shares nothing with the gasoline powered Silverado. That's right. We um, decided to reimagine the pickup truck and give a unique EV experience to the pickup owners. And so the Chevrolet Silverado EV is really a reimagined pickup truck redesigned from the ground up all new components, all new architecture, shared a little bit with our Hummer EV partners, but really um, an all new system that has uh, our, our what I'll call normal stance vehicle ready to go on the road. Okay. So unlike your competitors who shall remain nameless, <laughs> who basically took their standard pickup truck and slapped some batteries underneath it and removed the engine for a trunk, this is all new. It shares nothing with the regular Silverado and that's a good thing, right? Yeah, that's a great thing. I mean, um, EV adoption is all about range and being able to maximize the range offerings to our customers to ease their anxiety and bring them over and say, hey, not only can we offer 400 miles of range, but also you have opportunities for a unique experience in your pickup truck because of what an EV architecture can offer. So um, we didn't want to compromise and put batteries inside the frame rails and just put a battery electric um, architecture underneath our existing pickup truck. We really wanted to offer a compelling new vehicle to customers to show them what an EV can mean to them and to show them really that um, the EV future is built off of something that can be very different and very compelling and so we're very proud to have done the work and um, bringing out the Silverado EV uh, next year. Well that's awesome so this works off of the Ultium skateboard platform correct so it, it the batteries are part of the structure of this vehicle. That's right. So the Altium architecture is really about flexibility and scale for us. We're using the same Altium battery architecture that the Hummer EV has and some of our other EV vehicles are. That's how we can get that sustainable future so quickly that um, Mary and General Motors have talked about. And then from a, a structural perspective, that battery pack allows us to have a low center of gravity. The whole vehicle is built around that structural pack, so we're not giving up any durability, quality, payload from a traditional full-size pickup truck and yet we're offering even more refinement, more capability, more um, customer um, excitement and opportunities, having the EV architecture, having a flat floor, and really being able to recompartmentalize the pickup truck. I mean, this is a five foot 11 bed. Um, it's the longest in the EV space today. And we've gotten there with also having a cab that allows you to put a six foot passenger comfortably in the back seat. And we've reconfigured the truck, the wheelbase, the cab, to make all of that possible. So nothing is like its Silverado um, ICE counterpart. So there is a lot of controversy on the fact that this has, it's similar to a, uh, I, I don't, it's less like a body on frame and more like a uh, unibody construction, but this takes the best of both, the ride quality, the, uh, the lightness, so to speak, it's hard to say that with batteries, but takes the best of both worlds and the strength of the body on frame, correct? Yeah, so it's really not a body frame integral architecture either because the structure is integrated into the floor pan um, in a body frame integral. What we've done is really reimagined exactly what a um, architecture would be, quite frankly. We've got a new category of a body architecture. So it's not a body on frame with frame mounts and frame rails. It's not a body frame integral because the structure is in the Ultium battery pack. It's not just in the body itself. And we've created this new category that really is just going to transform how we we can do vehicles, not just for the Silverado pickup, to have that capability of a full-size pickup, don't give up any of that capability, but also to be able to do future vehicles off of that same Ultium architecture. So let's talk a little specifics about this beautiful one sitting right here behind us. Uh, what motivates this? Uh, we've talked about the batteries. What are, what are the electric motor or motor, motors in this one? 
Um, so the vehicle has a two motor system. It's got a zero to 60 time with our wide open watts mode in under four and a half seconds. So 664 horsepower, uh, 780 uh, pound feet of torque. So of course, crazy um, performance yes. numbers for those that are looking for that. Um, and you know, the, the feeling of the vehicle is that of an athletic sculpted look going down the road, much more of an urban feel for our RST. At CES, Mary talked about the fact that we also have a trail boss coming forward. That's our factory lifted, more off-road, uh, rugged looking vehicle. And what that really means to us is we're showing um, our customers and everyone that there's versatility in this design and the truck is going to be a very capable for a very wide range of models and opportunities for our customers. What is the suspension setup in this one? Uh, is it independent rear suspension? Yep, so we're um, breaking away from a traditional solid axle rear, going to rear independent suspension. It's got air, air suspension as well. And then on the RST, we've got um, rear steer. And that really offers um, not just the refined ride and handling we talked about with that lower center of gravity, but air suspension with rear steer offers a nimbleness and an ease of drive and um, uh, usage that is really unprecedented and it really is game changing for the full size truck market. So we'll kind of take a step back here and uh, Dan's around here somewhere. Uh, being that this is not a, an ICE engine, there's no internal combustion engine under this hood. What is under this hood? Can, can we get a peek, perhaps? Yeah, of so um, we're going to go uh, start doing front gates okay. instead of tailgates. And um, underneath the hood is what we call our frunk. It's a storage area that is um, uh, safe from weather. It's dry. It's sealed. It's lockable. We have a power hood on the RST. And we have um, charging capability or electrical outlets as well in here okay. so that you can um, power anything you want for your tail for your tailgate party or your front gate party you can leave tools in here to charge nice. and you can use um, basically anything you want for the battery power in the front as well and completely weather weather tight and all, weather all the, and everything yep that is good and then when we close this back down we can see all the unique uh, lighting elements and sequential lights i love the turn signals i know you all have got it in a program mode right now yep. uh, but what can you tell me about the lighting package on this one so the blue lights that you see right now are our charge indicators um, as it's charging you'll be able to see how much percent of your battery is left to charge things will stay solid as they're um, through like a 30 percent a 60 percent a 90 percent etc the, um, the LEDs underneath here are daytime running lights as well as turn signals. The RST has this really cool um, lit bar across the front that really just, that persona comes out that, hey, I'm an EV, look how awesome I am because yes. I am. Yes. And then the uh, headlights and projectors are down here that are LEDs as well. That's available on the RST and the work truck um, and it really allows for a uh, great nighttime visibility. And then I see uh, talking about efficiencies and thinking about you know an EV there are a lot of aero bits and a lot of sculpting has gone into this to make it very different from its gasoline powered counterpart what can you tell me about the overall design about this how, how slippery is this compared to its internal combustion counterpart so first of all I think there's some um, we kept with the Chevrolet theme in terms of it being a Chevrolet family when you're driving down the road you will still know that this is a Chevrolet pickup truck however um, we have a more sculpted, athletic, urban type feel in this pickup truck that was done purposefully because we wanted the EV to be set apart from its ICE counterpart. And yes, absolutely, we've got one of the lowest aerodynamic um, coefficients of drag in the full-size market today. We don't have our final numbers, but I um, will tell you that it's going to be very low. It's very slippery. And that really is to benefit the customers to be able to get that 400 miles of range out of it. They've got air curtains built in. We've got... Um, um, aerodynamics built into the wheels, we've yep. got aerodynamics built into the fascia, the sail panels on the side of the truck have aerodynamics built into it. I mean the whole truck is enabled by design but also um, tipping ourselves to making sure that everything we do is for aerodynamics as well. So you bring up the wheels. Largest production wheel on a vehicle, correct? On a full-size truck, 24-inch wheels and tires. We're gonna yeah. go big. This go big or go home. <laughs> exactly. Right? And you know, I'm from Texas, so yes, so absolutely. Go big or go home. Absolutely. Texas, right? Yes, this this is amazing and kind of continuing that clean sculpted look, borrowing a little from the Silverado gas power, just a little. A little bit, but still uh, 
unique for us. Right. So again, aerodynamics, you know, 24 inch wheels and tires on the RST makes sense for that urban feel. The truck still has 18 inch wheels and tires on the work truck. There's going to be, um, a, you know, a wider range of capability in the full size uh, pickup. So we know our customers, we know what they um, need and desire and that there are wants and needs that are different among different customers. And the versatility that the truck can offer is going to be quite amazing. Can we peek inside of it? We can. <laughs> our handy dandy Dan. Dan. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. This is gorgeous. So I, I love, I'm a techie myself, and seeing all the screens in here, I, I love the contrasting colors in here. Uh, talk about some of the freedoms that y'all had. You mentioned it earlier, being a, an all new architecture. Yeah, so um, with our all new architecture, it really means that we can redesign um, a much simpler instrument panel. We've lowered the cowl, we've lowered the hood um, forward edge, so we've improved the forward visibility. There's a full glass fixed roof on the RST that really offers more spaciousness to the driver when they're inside of the vehicle. And then the 17-inch um, freeform display along with our reconfigurable cluster really allows us to have a very simple and yet high-tech feel in the interior of the vehicle. Um, we've got some virtualization of switches, but we understand there's quite a uh, polarization in um, virtualization today. So we've kept things like volume knobs, Thank temperature you. knobs. Thank you. Um, some of the ride uh, controls on the left you can see are still there on the left side of the IP. But we have virtualized some switches, and I think that the team has done an awesome job with thinking through what that means. There's a persistent tray in the cluster that has those switches available to you, so even though they're virtualized, you're not searching for them deep inside of the menus. And then the other thing we're offering is personalization of that screen across the top. You can drag and drop apps that you would use into the top of the tray. So again, anything that you're a high user on, instead of flipping through the screens to find it, you can drag and drop it up top and then it's always there for you. So I really think that the team is thinking very, very deeply through um, how people use their vehicles, what they use them for, and every inch of this truck is a customer focus of what can we do to make that full-size experience better because we've got an all-new design from the ground up. All right, so I have to ask, full-size pickup trucks are the family vehicle of Texas. I'm 5'10", I'm like the quintessential average height man. Uh, how tall is handy dandy Dan over here? Dan is 6'4". Six six so that is the height I am always asked about. Any chance we could get you in the back seat to show how well it, it can hold someone Dan, uh, of your height? Dan <laughs> is way capable of being in that back seat. So one of the things we were able to do by reconfiguring the pickup truck is um, being able to uh, make our passenger compartment larger as well. So we actually have enough room for a six foot passenger like Dan. He can cross his legs. <laughs> very, very comfortably in the back row. And uh, we spent a lot of time making sure that we really designed this truck for versatility of all of our customer base. And it's something that Dan really appreciates. For sure. So I know we'll talk about this more when we get back to the back, but Dan had to flip it up in the first place. Uh, what's going on with the back seat here? Yeah, so we have this awesome mid gate that we were able to design in for the RST. And there's a 60-40 um, split fold seat in the back seat that allows you to pass through cargo from the truck bed into the cabin. And you can still carry a passenger in the back seat on the 40% side if you wish. That is amazing. So uh, a feature from the Avalanche, I I'm sure you have heard that name quite a bit uh, as lead engineer of this, but uh, done even better, no, plussed up, if you will, yep. uh, being able to split that 60-40 uh, like that. What happens uh, with the rear window with that split mid-gate? So right now it's in the configuration where it's in its 60% configuration, what we call pass-through mode. Um, you can pass through cargo and the glass still stays in. You can go to the 100% pass through and, and put a four by eight uh, piece of plywood in there. Um, when you're uh, folded down like this, you get up to nine feet, just over nine feet of capability with the tailgate still up, with the tunnel on that um, keeps all of your uh, cargo protected still. 
And then if you want the full open experience, the glass actually um, stores in the back of that mid gate and folds down with the mid gate out of the way so it, you don't have to put it in your garage and come back to it later. It's self-storing and the whole thing folds down and creates the full wide opening if you wanted to pass a couch or something else taller through. Well, let's move around to the bed and get a visual from back here of exactly what that looks like. Uh, because you said 5'11 standard bed, correct? And then you can go up to, uh, what's the total length with this uh, mid gate in place? So with this load stop up, you can be up to um, 10 feet, 10 inches from here all the way forward. So that's, you know, anything that you can imagine. We've put kayaks in here. Uh, no problem staying on this one side and still have our passenger in the back seat. Um, with the uh, tailgate up, the uh, storage is just over nine feet. And then a five foot 11 bed, I mean, that is the longest bed in the EV space today. It's been designed in purposely so that we get the most uh, cargo flexibility that we can for our customers. And we're really proud of the um, reconfiguration that we've done from the traditional uh, pickup. Well, I'm loving all the bits uh, that you are able to go to the GM parts bin, so to speak, and, and go and either resurrect with the mid gate or bring to a uh, Chevrolet Silverado EV with uh, the load stop here, the multi-flex tailgate. Uh, it's just awesome to see all the technologies put into one package. I don't know, uh, now that we're back here at the back, have we talked range just yet? Um, we talked about range, 400 miles of range. We haven't talked about the offboard power capability. Okay. I think it's probably important to talk about the fact that everybody may not be driving 400 miles in a day or even a week. And so we also have up to 10.2 kilowatts of offboard charging capability, which is really important to be able to use your vehicle. Again, versatility being the key uh, that we're trying to design into here. So you can power your campsite, a job site, a tailgate, a front gate, um, or even your home. And so um, there are 120 and 240 volt outlets that allow us to power any device in any location that you're using it in the vehicle. Nice. We also have um, vehicle to vehicle charge capability through the charge port. So if you happen to have a vehicle sitting on the side of the road that only has 280 or 300 miles of range and they happen to run out of range and couldn't get to a charge station, we can come along and offer them some charge and get them going on their way to their next charge station. That is awesome. That's thinking ahead. That's, I think, one of the next steps that uh, will really make this EV adoption uh, more plausible for more people is knowing that they won't be stranded. Uh, I know personally here on this channel, we've road tripped a vehicle with much lower range than the 400 in this. And uh, long trips, range anxiety, it factors in. It factors in. So uh, I think 400 is absolutely a spectacular number. Uh, what's the rate at which you could charge this? real world i know we could talk kilowatts and yeah. all this stuff but for the average consumer what are you looking at for a charge time so when i am driving um, the evs i'm using the dc fast charge stations there's several uh, vendors that have them throughout the country um, 350 kilowatt dc fast charge gets you 100 miles in 10 minutes um, I don't have the numbers yet for the 240 volt like in-home um, units, but they'll be very good. They'll be, you know, what people will want. We're already sort of industry leading with the 350 kilowatt um, fast charge. And so you can expect that we're going to have some pretty good charge numbers on our 240 volt as well. Well, is there anything that we have missed out moving from the front to the back of this all new Silverado EV? I would just say that, um, we are really excited about offering this product to everyone and we encourage everyone to go to Chevrolet.com and put in a $100 reservation to go ahead and get your spot in line. We've sold out our first edition RST as well as our work truck, but we are still taking reservations and we are working to fulfill those as quickly as possible. And so if you're interested, the um, range in prices from $39.9 all the way up to this truck fully loaded at $105.5 and um, go on and check us out. I'm, you won't be disappointed. You really piqued my interest up there earlier when we were talking about uh, the Trail Boss version. So I know Mary teased, there are some uh, images online, uh, but that that's the one that's got me. Uh, you said this one's more urban focused, but uh, being in Texas, Texas. you, you got to look for that off-road version. So very much looking forward to it. We thank the team from Chevrolet uh, for taking the time to walk us around this all new 2024, correct? correct. Silverado EV. Uh, we are 
are incredibly grateful for the chance to do this. And uh, if you want to see more stuff here from the Chicago Auto Show, uh, be sure and check the playlist linked down below.